Good evening, my name is uh, Yanis Antoniadis. I'm a researcher and adjunct instructor in the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki Physics Department and a member of the Laboratory of Nonlinear System Circuits and Complexity. Uh, in my talk, I will present the complex network time series analysis of current time series in nanotransistors with the visibility graph algorithm. A uh, brief presentation outline. Uh, First, I will introduce to you the complex network time series analysis method and how to uh, apply it to time series. Um, I will discuss some main conversion algorithms, but I will focus on the visibility graph algorithm. Then I will show you some uh, results from an old uh, work uh, coming from uh, nonlinear uh, non linear ODE system. And then I will uh, show you how to apply this method uh, that we applied very recently in um, noisy current signals coming from nanotransistors. First of all, what, what is the purpose of time series analysis? Uh, well, the basic aims is to characterize the state of an underlying dynamical system. So given a time series, you want to see if it's periodic, quasi-periodic, chaotic, if it comes from a critical system, is it random, and so on. Characterize the topology is the second uh, goal. Is it smooth? Is it fractal? Is it multifractal? And also, you would like to get a fingerprint of the underlying dynamical system uh, by analyzing time series from it. What are some of the classical tools we have for uh, to achieve these goals? Well, they're very well known tools from linear and nonlinear analysis and statistical uh, uh, mechanics. You can uh, there are some very well known metrics of, uh, that you can calculate, like autocorrelation, power spectrum, probability distributions, the embedding dimension, the Hurst exponent, the Yapon exponent, and so on and so on. So there's there's a, a, a huge number of tools available out there to uh, achieve these tasks. So uh, where does uh, complex network time series analysis come into that? Well, it's it's an additional tool in our arsenal for time series analysis. What does it do? Well, it combines graph theory with dynamical systems. And how is it done? Well, you convert the time series basically to a graph, uh, which is a complex network using a particular algorithm. So starting from a time series, you apply the algorithm, you get a graph, and then you can compute graph metrics. Uh, like the degree, the clustering coefficient, the diameter, modularity, and so on and so on, well-known graph metrics. And then from looking at and analyzing the graph metrics, you can answer questions about the time series in the underlying system. The top, what is the topology? Is it fractal? Is it periodic? And so on. Um, the most popular conversion uh, algorithm, very br briefly, well, the first one that appeared was the recursive network algorithm. Um, that uh, appeared by Zank, that uh, was introduced by Zank and Small in 2006. And that's what basically started this field. But then you had a number of other uh, uh, algorithms that appeared and they keep appearing. The most uh, prominent one is the visibility graph algorithm two years later by Lacasa. And then I would also like to mention the ordinal partition network introduced by Small in 2013. I will not uh, discuss these algorithms but I will go to the next slide and uh, focus on the visibility al graph algorithm, which uh, we apply in this study. So how does this uh, uh, algorithm go? Well, every point in the series corresponds to a node in the graph. Uh, and for example, you see the time series below, every point is a node and two nodes are connected if and only if they're visible from each other. So for instance, you look at this, series point and this one, uh, if you connect them by a, a straight line, all intermediate time series points lie be below the line, so they're visible and they will be connected in the resulting graph. Now these two points will not be connected because they're not visible from each other because you can see an intermediate series point, this one here lies uh, above the straight line connected them. So this is the way you, you, you create the visibility graph. What do you get from this? Well, you can first look at the degree. A quick reminder, the degree of a, of a graph of a node, a particular node, is the number of connections that start from this node to all other nodes. So if a degree three means that you have three connections to other nodes, degree five means you have five connections to other nodes. So if you look at the degree distribution of all the nodes in the visibility graph, 
Well, if, if the underlying series was periodic, you will get simple degree distributions. If, it were, if they had fractal topology, you will get degree distributions, which surprisingly, not surprisingly, have power law tails. And if you had random time series, you get exponential decaying details. So you get a lot of information about the topology of the time series, but looking at the degree. But what kind of other information can you get from other graph metrics? Uh, other graph metrics can give you a more subtle fingerprint of the underlying dynamics. Um, and, and, but there are some other open research questions. Is there an identifiable correspondence between particular graph metrics and the classical metrics? For example, can you relate the Yapunov exponent of the time series with, with, the, the, with some graph um, metric from the resulting visibility graph? This is an open question. Um, and, and the billion dollar question, of course, is can uh, metrics from complex network provide extra information about the system dynamics? Uh, beyond what you get from classical nonlinear analysis, then it means that this tool provides some added value to uh, uh, analyzing the underlying system. Uh, here I will show you some results. For, uh, this is the uh, a set of differential equations called the Vosdra equations. They come from a macroeconomic model. Um, it's not important what they represent for, for, for the moment, but here I show you <coughs> Uh, two time series from this system. One, the one on the right is periodic or nearly periodic, a period eight orbit. It's in the intermittent region, so it has some chaos in it. And you have uh, on the on the left a purely chaotic um, time series resulting at a visibility graph. And you can see already that the visibility graph of the nearly periodic time series is is uh, more ordered. It has less structure than the one coming from the chaotic series. And when you look at the degree distributions, the uh, plots on the left here, you see for the chaotic time series, uh, you have a power law decay and the degrees can raise up, up as high as 90. Uh, and uh, however, for the nearly periodic time series, you can see the degrees are at most 10 uh, and, and, and you have a richer structure. Because you have some intermittency here, you can see a small, uh, a little power low tail. So the, 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 the chaotic dynamics intermixed gave a fingerprint in the degree distribution. If you look at the clustering coefficients, here you can see, for example, on the uh, plot below, um, three different chaotic orbits, they have different clustering coefficients. So the clustering coefficient of uh, chaotic orbits, even once having the same Lyapunov exponent, can be different. So the clustering coefficient captures something else. Uh, in the dynamics. Uh, this is another interesting result that came from that study is that there was a direct linear correlation between the Yapunov exponent and a uh, graph metric called the average local graph dimensionality. And you can see there's a really a nearly a correspondence. This was, this was the result of that study, which is really interesting. Um, now let's go to current signals from nano MOSFETs. Well, it's been known for decades that current signals from uh, transistors are noisy. And the noise that they contain um, uh, is essentially random. It's Brownian noise. This has been known for decades. Um, in the past few years, uh, a number of colleagues of mine, like Stavros Stavinidis, Dimitri Stasis, and Michael Kanyas, they have uh, shown a very, very interesting result that from some nano -trans uh, trans uh, transistors, especially ones that were previously stressed, that is, they apl you apply a very large gate voltage and you essentially uh, sort of uh, uh, spoil the transistor, um, they're not Brownian noise. The noise is not Brownian noise. It, connect it contains low dimensional chaotic dynamics in it. And this is in itself a very interesting result. They've proved it with a number of nonlinear analysis methods. But uh, here in this study, we try to do the same by applying complex network time series analysis and, and, and in particular visibility graphs. Um, here I, I show you the, the distributions of the normalized differences of the original time series from a fresh and a stressed transistor. Uh, the black line is, is the a Gaussian fit. So you can see already from the distributions of the difference that you have a departure from Gaussian behavior uh, and, and you have some fat tails, uh, which is proof of, of the existence of, of, of uh, um, chaotic dynamics. 
Uh, now, if you look at the average degree of the visibility graphs um, for various values of the gate voltage of these time series, uh, comparison between stressed and fresh transistors, well, the stress transistors had slightly uh, higher um, degree than the fresh ones, but what is the, 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 the differences are not so much pronounced. But what you can see is if you shuffle the time series, if you do a random permutation of the time series and then take the degree of the visibility graph, you see a sharp rise of the degree distribution, which means that the, the, the temporal correlations hidden in the original time series have an effect on the degree distributions. Uh, if you look at the degree distributions now, um, you see that they have power law behavior in all the time series, both first and stressed, as uh, so they're the fractal time series. And the most interesting result came from the clustering coefficient distributions. Um, on the upper left plot, you can see that the stressed uh, and fresh transistors for the same gate voltage, they have completely different uh, clustering coefficient distributions. The fresh transition has uh, less clustering than the stressed transition. And if you look at the plot below that, uh, this is again stressed and fresh transition comparative for different gate voltage, 0.9 volts. And here you see the difference in the clustering coefficient is not so pronounced. So in, in the lower gate voltage values, clustering coefficient can distinguish between stressed and the fresh transistor. Now on the upper right uh, plot, you can see the average clustering coefficient uh, as a function of the gate voltage. You can clearly see that as the gate voltage increases, the average clustering uh, drops uh, for both the fresh and the stressed transistors. So another interesting fact is that if you shuffle the series, you don't see a significant difference between the original series and the, uh, the, the uh, shuffle time series clustering coefficient, which means that the clustering coefficient depends on the fat tails. When you shuffle, you do not dis you destroy the temporal correlations, but not the fat tails. Um, so a clustering coefficient um, depends on the fat tails. In, uh, in the next uh, uh, slide, I show you some uh, two more metrics, connectivity or modularity. The interesting thing here is that uh, if you do another uh, processing of the time series, if you Gaussianize, that is, you, you keep the temporal correlations, but you uh, destroy the fat tails, and so you have a Gaussian distribution of differences, uh, you see that there is a, a, a very pronounced difference in the resulting uh, visibility graphs, the, the Gaussianized time series, have, have uh, large connectivities. And if you look at the modularity though, you see that they have the Gaussianized time series have lower modularities. So the, the original time series uh, keeping the fat tails are more uh, modular. Uh, so as a, as a conclusion, uh, we have seen that the complex network time series analysis uh, capture the subtle uh, system dynamics. Um, the, met the graph metrics distinguish between fresh and stress transistors. They distinguish between various values of the control parameters, which is the gate voltage, and they also capture temporal correlation as well as the existence of fat tails in the distribution. As part of future work, um, we would like to repeat this analysis with other uh, algorithms such as the OPG algorithm. Thank you for your attention. I will take uh, any questions that you may have uh, now.